All right, like, who who made this? <laughs> they were like probably having like a really good day. Like, I, I don't know what they were smoking, but like, we we like, wh what? <laughs> I can't believe this happened. Yo, what's going on guys? This is Poger coming at you with another video. So I'm going to be going over a very recent finding as of literally less than a month ago. It's going to be the first Sonic game, a prototype, that we previously didn't really know much about. All we had was magazine articles. So now let's go over it and I'm actually going to be explaining why this is really, really huge. Anyway, let's get right on to it. First thing we should probably ask, what exactly is a prototype when it comes to video games? Sometimes if E3 or a toy fair might be around the corner and a game company isn't quite finished with a game, they will show a prototype version of it, which usually has incomplete levels and is overall rough around the edges. The best example is the Simon Y prototype of Sonic 2, which, according to game designer Yuji Naka, was stolen from a toy fair in New York. The prototype was missing some of the levels and still contained many glitches. This prototype surfaced in 1999. Usually the cartridges themselves didn't look great because they were just being used as a prop to show a big audience what the game is all about. It was never expected for the games to ever be dumped to the public. The developers just wanted people to get a sneak peek of it and then forever destroy or hide the cartridge from there. However, sometimes the prototype versions would get leaked on the internet, whether it was from a game being stolen or a developer of the game leaking it years later. The latter is most likely how known member of the Sonic community, DRX, was able to obtain a prototype of Sonic 3. In this early build of the game, Sonic and Tails were still using their old sprites from Sonic 2, and a lot of the music and cutscenes were altered. To think, that this prototype was never obtained until November of 2019 is unbelievable. However, that leaves one prototype still never found. Until recently. Before a prototype of the first game was found, there was plenty of magazine articles that contained screenshots that were clearly older versions of the game. In this Japanese article, for an example, we can see a very early version of Green Hill Zone. I mean, wow, look at that looks much different from the final game. The title screen also had a black background. Okay, so here's another image from a magazine. Looks like a more recent prototype, but what's out of the ordinary is that random checkered ball that was not in the final release. Dr. Robotnik does have a checkered ball on his bulldozer, but it was never just out in the open like in this picture. Also notice where it says ring instead of rings. Alright, so this image looks normal, except Sonic's weird victory pose. What's that about? This sprite was not in the final version, but I kind of wish it were. I mean, look, it's pretty humorous. Here is a magazine cutout of Marple Garden Zone. What's with the eyeballs? There are also some unused sprites that are inside the game's code, but were never actually used in-game. That victory pose from before? That's actually in the final game's code, but never used. That checkered ball is there too. There also appears to be a Goggles ability that was going to be in the game. People suspect this would have given Sonic the ability to breathe underwater. This was never used either. Speaking of underwater, this sprite of Sonic holding his breath was never used. Not sure why they didn't go with it, as he can't breathe underwater in the final game. So again, these are sprites that are contained inside the game's code, but never actually got put inside of the game. So you won't find any of these in a normal playthrough. Until earlier this month, this was pretty much all we knew about the first Sonic game. But good old DRX did what he does best and was able to obtain a real prototype of Sonic as of January 1st, 2021. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so, so far it looks identical. The title screen isn't black, so this must be a later build than the one in that magazine. 
You may notice the press start button at the bottom. That was actually supposed to be in the final game, but doesn't appear due to a programming glitch. Alright, so let's get some obvious stuff out of the way. Green Hill Zone does have the checkered ball after all, and you can actually ride it too. Marble Zone has the eyeballs, or UFOs in the background, kind of like in that magazine cutout. Spring Yard Zone, or Sparkling Zone in this prototype. What happened? This looks much different from the final game. This is night and day. Labyrinth Zone also got a makeover since this prototype. Honestly, I think I prefer the way the prototype version looks. The final game looks okay, but I never liked the background that was clearly just copy-pasted everywhere. This version actually looks like you're in some sort of labyrinth of some kind. Alright, so here is Clock Orc Zone. We all know this should be Scrap Brain Zone. Look at it. It's clearly incomplete. It doesn't look too great. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about with these prototypes. There's going to be a lot of stuff here that isn't done. And look, I got stuck, so I guess I'm going to reset now. So going into more of the specifics, Green Hill Zone has a few level layout changes, but outside of the checkered balls roaming around, it's identical to the final. It's also the only zone that has a boss. Marble Zone has these weird platforms you have to keep jumping on. I don't know if this was just a temporary thing or if this is what Sega originally wanted to do, but I'm glad they changed it to just pressing a button to move the platform down. This and Green Hill Zone are actually the only ones that have three complete acts, but Marble Zone Act 3 doesn't have a boss. The enemies are also noticeably different. What are these guys doing here? Where are the caterpillars at? Sparkling Zone only has one complete act. When you beat it, it brings you to Starlight Zone. The other two acts are only accessible with the level select code. Starlight Zone has a working Act 1, but Acts 2 and 3 are only on level select. I checked out Act 2 out of curiosity, and it was pretty messy. Aw, oh, come on, I wanted to ride that. Labyrinth Zone has no enemies on screen or water. I got stuck and ended up resetting. What 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 just ha <laughs> what what just happened? <laughs> Th this can't be real, dude. Like, this is the type of stuff you really like can't make up. So the special stages are there, but they still need a lot of work. The jumping is still kind of wonky. Much more difficult to control Sonic than in the final game. Also, you can't collect emeralds yet, and when you die, the game soft locks and you're stuck. Clearly, the special stages were still in early development. So remember that magazine cutout where Sonic was doing that goofy victory pose? Look at this. Alright, like, who who made this? <laughs> they were like, probably having like a really good day. Like, I, I don't know what they were smoking, but like, wee, wee, like, wh what? <laughs> I can't believe this happened. So, the music is about the same, but with some different tones. You can really hear it with Sparkling Zone. Take a listen. So you can tell, this prototype is obviously incomplete. Green Hill Zone and Marble Zone are near done, but the rest of them need some work. Some are barely functional, to be honest with you. If I were to speculate, I wouldn't be surprised if this prototype was only meant to show off Green Hill Zone and Marble Zone, and that's it. So why is this prototype important? Well, not much was known about the development process of the first Sonic game. All we had were those magazine cutouts and articles and interviews. The fact that we're still finding out about this in 2021? That's unbelievable. There are apparently still secrets we're finding out about 30 years later. Imagine what secrets we will find out in another six months, or another year. And I definitely owe it to DRX for doing whatever he does in order to obtain these prototypes in the first place. So let me know in the comments, how do you think DRX obtains these prototypes? Do you think more prototypes will be found in the future? And in general, what are your experience with classic Sonic games? With that said, thanks so much for watching this video. I wanted to give a personal shout out to Sonic Retro, Megabytes Blog, The Cutting Room Floor, and HiddenPalace.org. 
Without them, I would not have been able to find the information that I did, so thank you so much. Remember to leave a like and drop a subscription if you haven't already. With that said, have a good one guys.